Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, this is Antoine Matthews with another Try Hack Me walkthrough. So today we're going to be working on the room ice. As you can see right here, it says deploy an attack into a Windows machine, exploiting a very poorly secured media server. Um, I already had this set up. So you see, I got my attack box IP already going. We got our target IP right here. Um, I already completed the box. This is pretty simple. I don't expect this to take more than 30 minutes. So let's get it started. Um, task one is always connect. This is simple stuff. Um, pretty much if you're running your own VM, go ahead and get your stuff launched up. You can follow these directions. You know, you have an open IP or open uh, VPN that'll get you connected to the, to the server and you'll be good to go. Let's go ahead and get into the fun stuff, right? So we're gonna hop into task two, which is recon. Uh, for recon, once again, we're going to use our handy dandy MMAP. MMAP is the boss. No matter what nobody tells you, MMAP is the boss. That's one of my favorite tools and perfect for doing recon. So uh, first question or task, deploy the machine. We already did that, right? So let's go ahead and push uh, enter right there. Next, launch a scan against our machine. It's recommended to use SIN, scan all ports. All right, so look. You already know the drill. Typically, MMAP takes a minute. So I already did this scan. And I'll read through the command if you don't understand it, right? So first is MMAP. That's the, the tool that we want to use. To do a SIN scan, it's uh, TAC lowercase s, hiercase s. Um, a, or TAC A, once again, that'll give you everything. That's like all. So I want all the information that's getting scanned. Uh, you know my style when it comes to try hack me. I uh, I uh, do all my scans aggressive, so that's why you have the TAC T5 here. Um, that way you can just go as fast as possible. We don't have to worry about setting off any IDSs or firewalls because it's just a game. Uh, right here, this is our IP address, and then I turned off the ping. So this is our, our report. You can see there's a lot of stuff on here, right? Look at all these ports that are open. But uh, we'll get into that into a minute. It said access, it asked us to go ahead and just run the scan. This is our scan results, all right? So we're going, we're done with that one. Once again, completes, we'll see a number of interesting ports open on this machine, as you might've guessed, the firewall disabled, yep. All right, so the meat and potatoes of this is, one of the more interesting ports that is open is Microsoft Remote Desktop or MSRDP. So if you know anything about, you know, ports and which you probably should if you're on here, uh, RDP is typically port 3389. So let's go ahead and see if that's open. It, obviously, I showed you the answer, but you'll see it right here, right? 3389. Another way that you can confirm this because it's not, it says TCP wrap. Might be kind of hard if this is your first time. Remember, we're uh, ethical hackers, right? So we use all our tools, use all our resources. So let's go ahead and open up Chrome or Firefox in this scenario. Type in, matter of fact, let's do this too, this way. I did port 3389. So you can do it that way, right? And when you scroll down, It'll tell you remote desktop protocol. What's that port, right? Port 3389. Let's also do it this way. Port MS, remember, and RDP. 3389. So those are two different ways that you could utilize to search this stuff. Remember, when you have a question, when you don't know what to do, ask Google you know, go to a search engine, like use your resources. Um, this isn't something where we're tied inside of a box and we have to follow specific protocols. So let's use all the resources that are available to us. Cool. All right. So let's go ahead and close this because we don't need that anymore. But so it said, what service did MAP identify as running on port 8000? So let's go and pull up our MAP scan again, right? Scroll down. All right. So look, port 8000. We have IceCast streaming media server. Remember it said we was gonna break into an insecure media server. This is it right here. So IceCast, let's go back. First word of the service, IceCast, there we go. 
All right. Um, what does MAP identify as the host name of the machine? All caps for the answer. So we, we need to find a name of this host. What's the host machine name? So literally just go through your MAP scan. Take your time. Boom, look, that's already one right here. Dark PC, right? But that's not exactly what you want to look for when you are trying to find a host name. You want to go down to this area. So look, let's say right here host right system or service info host dark pc that's the name of the host so let's go and type that in right here let me get to the next page boom dark tag pc the answer is correct we already finished recon right that was easy peasy lemon squeezy so we're going to hop in and tash three let's go and some gain some access now let's do some real hacker stuff right because that's what we all came here to do so let's see what they want us to do. Now that we have identified some interesting service running on our target machine, let's do a bit of research into the where the service is identified, Icecast. Um, so essentially what it wants us to do is do research on Icecast so we can see what this vulnerability is. So typically what happens when you find weird services or you wanna find a way to exploit something on a system, you wanna do research and see what that vulnerability is or if you can even find out if it is a vulnerability. Right here is asking us to go to this site and I'm gonna click on this. I think it might move us. So let me try it real quick. Or actually, let me just copy it. Watch this. Do copy, paste. All right, cool, right? So we put that right here We're at the top. Search Icecast. All right, so we did search Icecast on cvedetails.com. Scroll and scroll down. Look, what do we have right here? Buffer overflow Icecast 2.0.1. And this is the CVE for it. Um, 2004 attack 1561. Let's go and click on this. I'll break that down for you, right? So look, when you see CVE, that's the common vulnerability. Um, this. 2004, that's the year that this vulnerability was discovered. And the 1561, or you could say 1,561, that was the 1,561st vulnerability found in 2004. So that's how they have this thing listed, right? Well, let's go back and see what they want us to do after we get this information. It says, what type of vulnerability is it? So let's go back to our page. So it lists all the information, even tells you in that question that it was 7.5, right, for CVSS score. So let's scroll down. Vulnerability types. Execution code overflow. That's the type of vulnerability this is. Let's go back. Boom. Execute code overflow. Easy day, right? Oh, now check this out. We, we got two answers for the price of one. What is the CVE number for this vulnerability? Remember, we just broke this down. I showed y'all 2004 attack 1561. So let's scroll back. We don't even need to scroll back. It's right here for us. CVE attack 2004 attack 1561. Easy money. We got it. So cool. Let's go to the next part. Uh, now that we found out the vulnerability, let's find our exploit. Oh, you hear that word exploit? That's where it's about to get good, people. Let's do this. So for this section of the room, we'll use Metasploit. Metasploit is fire. Like somebody told me um, when I was in school that Metasploit, when it first came out, was the equivalent of going to the ice cream truck and having them serve kids dynamite and telling them to go have a good time. Like Metasploit is crazy. You can do almost any and everything for Metasploit. So look, well, I'm gonna actually make the screen big so y'all can see this. If you don't know, it's to, to launch the Metasploit, it's MSF console. Watch it load up. It's going to do some kind of dope picture. It's always a cool picture. It remind me of like Nintendo. Oh, they didn't do the dope picture. But look, you still got some other stuff on here. You know what I mean? Now, I mean, something to look at. All right, so look, let's go back to where we need to be at. So, all right, that's done. Um, after the Metasploit is started, Let's search for an exploit using search icecast. So um, that's pretty straightforward, right? So search icecast. We're gonna see if it's a vulnerability on here. So check this out, right? It had our exploit. 
Um, it tells you the number of exploits that are on here, like payloads, like it's so much stuff already equipped. So let's go and type in what they access. Search ice cast. Boom. Oh, look at this. <laughs> look, we already found an exploit. Look, and it even highlighted it for you so that you know what you typed in. It gives you a description and it gives you a rank. Great is good, obviously. That means that the possibility of this exploit actually being successful is going to be pretty high. All right, cool. So what they want us to do is give them the path. So let's go back and see what the path is. Just copy and paste this. Copy this whole thing right here, right? Copy that whole thing and paste it right here. That's going to take us to the location of the exploit that we want to use. So it's two different ways that you can use um, this exploit. You can type use Icecast or use zero, or you can type in a full path. I, I like the easier way to do it. So let's type in use zero. Boom. You see that? Look, we are in here like swimwear. It loaded up for us. What's next? Boom. boom, boom, boom. All right, follow and select in the module. That's the module we got to load it up. Uh, we now have to check what options we have. Set, so show options, show options would be easy to, easy day. Let's go and see what we got on here. So show options. Cool, so when you type in show options, these are the op options. You know, you got your module options right here. You got your payload options right here. What we wanna check for is, is there anything that's left blank on here? or any incorrect information, right? So first thing that caught my eye is the R host, that's remote host. That's not us, that's the, the target machine. That's the IP address that you would wanna put right here. It's even a description, right? It tells you the target host, that's our target. That's the person we're trying to get into the box. Um, and local host, that's us. Uh, our port, pretty, pretty explanatory, right? So look, let's go back and see what the, with the question access though. It said, what is the required, what is the only required setting currently blank? We talked about that, right? The remote host or our host is blank. So we got to fill that in. Um, first, let's check that the L host option is set to our tune IP. When you're on try hack me, it's already set up. So, all right, I'm gonna skip. So I can show you all this real quick. All right. So look, first, what we want to do is let's set the remote host. So set our host. What's the our host? What's, what's that IP address for our target? All right. So look, 10, 10, 1, 3, 4, 2, 3, 7. All right, cool. So look, we're going to put show options again so we can make sure that it applied. All right, cool. So look, that's the address for the target machine. Let's verify it one more time. You know, I don't like doing stuff twice. So look, 10, 10, 1, 3, 4, 2, 3, 7. 10, 10, 1, 3, 4, 2, 3, 7. Easy day. So we good money. Let's see what else we got to do. Remember, it's talked about the L host, a local host. That's our local IP address. If you're on... Um, Try hacking you. It's look, it's right here. It tells us 10 10 108 38. We easy day. So, in order for us to actually execute this, it's two different ways you can do it, right? So, you can type run, which will work, or you can type in exploit if you're feeling real hackerish. So, look, let's put exploit. Boom. So, look, we opened up a interpreter shell. That means that we're on the computer. We're we didn't we have low ranking privileges on this computer. Remember. Um, the user for this box is dark. Right now we are dark. I don't know if I was supposed to tell you that already, but look, we escalated our privileges. We're good to go. Um, look, and once again, it says woohoo. You know what I say? Nah, I mean, I don't say woo, I say nah, I mean. So check it. It says we gained a foothold on our victims machine. That's what they are, they're victims. Um, what's the name of the show we now have? So once again, it'll tell you right here, my interpreter. Interpreter show. That's the type of show we need. It's a low privilege show. What is it? Remember, I told you I wasn't supposed to tell you that. So it says, 
what is um yeah what user is running that icecast process so icecast is a service so what user is running a service right now so in order for you to find out you can type get you it or uid and it'll tell you right here right so remember this is our host machine name this is the user so the user is dark if you didn't know how to figure that out or you didn't know that code they have all these hints right here utilize these hints look it'll probably tell you how to do it easy day didn't i just say that i know pat on the back antoine thanks for helping us out i got you so look all right so now we need to figure out what's the build of the windows like what system well, what's the build of it so let's run back in here right so we already got our show popped up so look we're gonna type in sys info short for system information right easy day let's push enter and see what happens all right. Oh, look, easy money. Look, they gave they giving us all the beans, people. They giving us all this information. So look, OS operating system, Windows 7, 6.1, build 7601. So let's go back. The build of the Windows. Build 7601. Easy money. Bro, this is this is easy. Hacking is fun, right? This ain't this ain't hard. It's it's easy, right? Just know what to do and read through the paperwork. Well, not the paperwork, but the screen. You feel me? So look. Um, now that we got, know some of the finer details of the system, yada yada yada. Let's start escalating. That's what I like. Let's start escalating our privileges because I told y'all we on this low end, you know, janky interpreter shell. We need to start getting some stuff popping. You know, at least the way I wanted to. So look, it says first, what is the architecture? But a process we're running once again this is already listed in the system info so just read through here architecture x64 boom that's our answer right there all right so p says now that we know the architecture of the process let's perform some further recon so we about to dig deeper now we really about to get into this let's make sure we know exactly what's going on right so while this doesn't work best on x64 machines let's now run the following command so look, it gave us this command just follow the instructions but this is cool because this suggestion is what it's going to do it's, it's going to um it already knows what exploit we're looking for what the vulnerability is for this machine because we're on the machine right so what this is going to do is look for exploits look it says right here this can appear to hang at times and it doesn't say right there but essentially what it's going to do is it's going to go through the machine and figure out what exploits we could use that's going to work on here. So let me go and type this at the top. Boom. And now we're going to go ahead and type it right here. Run. Post. Multi. Recon. Local. Exploit. Suggester. So this is like asking one of your friends, one of your buddies. Hey, look, man, I don't know exactly what i could do on here you know let me know let me give me give me a hookup give me a, toss me a bone let me know what uh kind of exploits i can run and it, what they're gonna do they're gonna go run today dictionary they memory book whatever they got and they're gonna say hey bro look try this try this i think this is gonna work for you that's what we're doing right now and be patient remember they said it, it can take some time but it's moving through here as long as you see them the blue and the green that means stuff is working. It should be a few more on here. So yeah, it's still going. All right, cool. So once you get the interpreter at the bottom, that means that it's done. So look, it found quite a few exploits on here. These are all exploits that it suggests might be, um, you know, might actually be successful on this machine. So let's go back and see what the next question asks. So that's done. It says running a local exploit suggester. Quite a few. Okay. All right, so it says, what is the path? What is the full path starting with exploit backslash for the first return exploit? So that's easy. All right, so look, let's go right here and where it starts to get green at. Look, this is when it was checking or trying. It was actually trying these to see if it worked out for you, right? So right here, when it turns green, that's this is showing you the actual exploits. So this is the very first one that it found for us. And the first one that it tried. Just copy it, bro. <laughs> Just copy it and put it um, right here. We, we found the answer. 
like, oh man, this is easy day, easy day. So cool. So now we're gonna push this to the background. I'm I already did this. So I'm look, it's two different ways you can do it. You can actually type in background or control Z if you like short codes. I like short codes, but since this is a tutorial, let's keep everything simple. So let's just write it out right back ground because you want to go to the background so go to the background boom look so backgrounding session one so you can have multiple sessions you want to remember this right so we were on session one you can take a note you can whatever you want to do just remember that was session one right cool so it says go ahead select our previous file exploit use boom. so we want to use that exploit that we just the found remember the first one right here I already had it highlighted so look let's go ahead and Copy this and put it down here. What it's gonna do is gonna open up a module so we can go to our show options and you know modify it the way we need to. Well, you see, you see how we switch. First we was in the ice cast header. Now we're in that exploit, the one that we just found. We said we wanted to go there, now we're there. Let's see what else they need us to do. So we did that. Um, local exploits require a session to be selected so we need to set our our session remember i told you it was on session one last time right so um let's make sure we didn't miss anything something we can verify and show options all right yeah so look let's go and put show options so we can do it by the book because i don't want to get too ahead of everybody all right, cool. So look, we left out of the session. Remember, we put it in the background. So it's still there, but we left out of it because we wanted to navigate into this module right here. Do you remember this exploit module, the first exploit? That's where we at. But now that we're here, we got to say, look, I got the exploit. I'm going to set this up and I need it to point back to session one because that's where I wanted to actually run the exploit to see if we can be successful. If you notice right here, we got those module options again. There's no session right here. It's just blank. The other information is filled in, but the session is blank. So let's put set session one. Let me go back, make sure I'm not missing nothing. All right, cool. And if y'all wanna see how the command looks, the format is right here, look, set session, and then session number. Same thing I put right here, right? Easy day boom so look now it's connected like the west side connection yay yay so look all right what we got next now we have all right so look once again since we're already on try hack me we already have our local host set to the correct ip address that's our listener you know uh if you're once again like if you're running your your vm or you got uh your virtual box open and that's how you got this connected you might want to double check because um you know you might have a separate ip you just want to make sure everything is is fluid how it's supposed to be because if you got the incorrect ip address right here you're not going to be able to successfully um run this exploit um set this option now you might see look we already did it we don't need to run this at all um let's see what this next one is um after we set this last option we can now run a privilege exploration x uh, <laughs> We can now run privilege escalation exploit. I remember I told you, you can push run or you can put exploit. So this one, it says run. So let's just type in run. That way you can see how this one works too. So look, it's, it's working. Remember, I told you, as long as you're seeing green and blue, I mean, I mean, we good. Remember, we don't say who we say, nah, man. All right, so wait. Cool. So. This is everything it did. Start at the reverse TCP handler. Look, this is our, this is our IP, our listener. This is the port that we're listening on. We enabled some stuff. Yeah, it, it was successful. It went through. So let's go ahead and run this. Let me see. Let's go back. Um. The following completion of the project legislation, a new session is open in the right session. All right. Um, it did that automatically for us. Look, 
Materpreter session three open. We don't have to do it. It did it for us manually. I mean, automatically. Now we can verify we have expanded. So look, all right. So we want to make sure that we have, remember we wanted to escalate our privileges. So by us escalating our privileges, we should have more permissions, right? That makes sense. That's why we don't want to stay at a lower classification. So let's up bring this thing so we can get more power. So in order for us to figure out if this actually worked, we're going to type in this command, get privs. It's not telling you that you're about to get the, the privileges, but it's just telling you which ones that you have. It's like pulling them for you. So get privs. Oh, look, and this is what we have. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, no. We're coming up short. We're coming up short. Let me type this real quick. Sessions. Oh, show sessions. Why is it not working, people? We were just moving to this. Um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let's do test session two. Hey, look, man, they hated on us. We was cruising through here, right? I set this up beforehand, and then now it's not working right. We should be able to get the, it should be way more privileges in this. Some just happened, people. Because look, you got to see we did it right here. Sessions. Let's try this one. Sessions. Too. All right, now watch this. Good prayers. Oh, I'm something like a young beast out here. Y'all see that? I told you. Look, all you got to do is navigate. So what happened was I I finished this box before I hopped on here with y'all. So that's why it opened up session three. Well, we should have been in session two. But do y'all see the difference? That was actually good that this happened. So when you moving through boxes and you're hacking, um. It's not the easy bake oven. It's not like YouTube. You don't push buttons and then stuff just happen the way it's supposed to. You're going to run in the walls, right? Because you don't know everything and stuff just don't go as planned all the time. So look, this is what it says. Enable process privileges. This is what we had, right? With this one, two, three, four, five. This is five privileges. And they all boo-boo privileges. Don't nobody care about shutting down stuff, you know, time zone privilege, blah, 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 blah. Now, peep this, peep this. Y'all see all of this, all of this? This is what we want. This Now, these look like privileges to me, bro. This is what I want, I mean? So look, let's go back and see what they need us to do. Um, it says, we can now verify that we have expanded. Y'all see that expanded? We have five. Now we got all of them, all of them. How many of them? All of them. Boom. So look, using the get prayers. It says what permission listed allows us to take ownership of the files because that's what we want. <laughs> I want all your files, baby. Open up that computer. All right, so look, let's look through here real quick. Y'all seen it on the other one. I already had it on there, right? It's right here. SE take ownership privilege. That means as soon as we type that in, it's, it's already too late for them. It's too late for them. All right, so look. Now we set our privileges. We got it. Let's go to looting. Give me the loot. Give me the loot. Shout out to Biggie. So, all right, cool. This is Mimi Cats or me. Yeah, Mimi Cats. So let's just read the top of it for y'all real quick. Learn how to gather additional credentials and crack the saved hashes on the machine. Now, this is the good stuff. This is that fire, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, look, um, let's read this real quick. Prior to further action, we need to move to a process that actually has the permissions that we need to interact with the last service, the service responsible for authentication within Windows. First, let's list the process using the PS. So yeah, when you put PS, that's gonna list all the processes so you can see what's going on. No, we can see the process is being run. All right, so look, let's just go ahead and type in PS so we can get to the next step. So we can get to this fire, right? So look. We typed in PS. These are all the processes running on here. 
running on look into authority that's the highest that's where we want to be at right so let's go ahead and go back and see what else we need to do while we here um in order to interact with last we need to be living in a process that is the same architecture as the last 64 in a process that has the same permission as last the printer spool remember this the printer spool service happens to meet our needs perfectly for this all right so that's all i need to know they said look the printer spool service so easy day let's go ahead and go back in here and look at our processes that we got running which one says spool that's all we got to do is find it once we find it, oh hey look we hit it boy look right there and they wanted us to list it so let's go ahead and copy and paste that and put it right here so that's that's easy day that's easy day so now that we got there we need to migrate to it right we need to migrate to that service that that's running that way we could you know be where we need to be at so we're gonna migrate in like navigate and then the process name so let's go ahead and shift control c that one type migrate Tag, higher case M, paste that bad boy. Man, don't you love them, 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 them blues? I told you them blue and greens, they help you. So look, we just, this is showing you what happened. You migrated from 1976 to 1368. So 1368, where was we at? 1976. So we were running PowerShell. And look at the difference, right? So PowerShell is right here. This is the whole joint. Remember, we we're on this computer. Dark PC with this user. Dark. So where is the spool? Spool. Oh, that's the authority, baby. <laughs> that's that privilege escalation, baby. System. Let's do it. All right. So let's see what else we got. Oh, all right. Cool, 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 cool. So look, now we about to uh, make sure that we actually got the right thing so it says let's check what user we are now with the command i showed you all this earlier when you want to find out who you are get uid get user id think about it that way get user id so let's type it in get uid oh baby that's what i'm talking about baby look what we got server username oh we got it service for service or you got serve because Antoine is hacked into your network. Either way, just give me the credit. All right, so look, cool. It says, now that we made our way to full administrator permissions, we'll set our sights on looting. Give me the loot, break your pockets. Mimi Cats is rather an infamous password dumping tool that is incredibly useful. Password dumping, I like that. Oh, infamous is even better. Loaded. Now using load Kiwi. Kiwi is the updated version of Mimi Cats. So basically, that's the newer version of it. Latest and greatest. Go and type in load Kiwi because we trying to loot something. We can't go on here. Oh, yeah. Look, and it's working. Success. Success, success, success. Let's highlight it. Because that's all we do is win, win, win. All right. So look, let's go back. I'm getting hyped all over again. Like I ain't did this. All right. So look. Loading Kiwi into our interpreter session will expand our help menu. So once again, expand, we should have more options here. And they're actually pretty dope options. So everybody pay attention on this part because this is about to get really good when we move into the next session, okay? So it says, take a look at the newly added section help. So let's go ahead and type that in. So we're going to type in H-E-L-P. All right, cool. So look, we got a whole lot of options here. Where's my mouse at? Oh, it's right here. What happened to my mouse? Oh, there we go. Man, y'all, I don't know what just happened, but it's not working like it should be. Hold on real quick. All right, party people. I don't know what happened. We had some technical difficulties. Tried to load Kiwi and I tried to push load and it decided to explode. Yeah, it cut us off. We had to reconnect and start the machine again. But look, we in here, right? So um, 
essentially we was right here low key we in a interpret session we already got it i'll show you so i got it up success remember i was so excited before it messed up now i said type in help so we can see the expanded menu boom and there we go look look at all these cool look at all these cool options and commands that we have it lists all this stuff and um i know i'm moving fast through this but y'all should really look at everything that you can do in here because you got a lot more power than you realize um so let's start at the very beginning with the access it says which command allows you to retrieve all credentials all credentials that sounds pretty fire right because if you could just get all the credentials <laughs> that would be amazing so look creds all it's right at the top it's under kiwi commands the very first one creds all description retrieve all credentials bang so now we right here so it says run this command now who what is dark's password let's not even read the rest let's okay let's read it mimi cast allows us to steal this password out of memory even without the dark user logged in as there is a scheduled task that runs the ice cast as the user dark so essentially this service or that task the schedule is going to um it's imitating dark so it already has its credentials so that, and that's what we navigated into. We're about to steal his passwords because that's what I want to do. It says it also helps that Windows Defender isn't running on the box. So they don't have no firewall or nothing on here to protect against it. Um, take a look again at the PS list. This box isn't in the best shape. Basically, it's telling you, look, you can go in, um, put process or PS. So you can verify that those services aren't working, but I can care less about them services. We know they aren't working. Let's go and type in Krez under tack all and snatch this dude's password. Bang, and that's all I care. Look, usernames, the domains, and the passwords. We're looking for dark, right? Dark, remember the, the domain or the host? That's this computer, his workstation. Dark tack PC, and look at the password. Password zero one exclamation point. That is a weak password. That is a super weak password. Obviously, it's because it's on here. But think about this: if it was real life, if you were to go and hop into somebody's stuff, you got all their passwords. And this is why I tell you how to make complicated passwords anyway, because this is a vulnerable password just on the strength, because it's boo boo. But look, let's go back and let's see what we have to do next. Oh, so look, now we're into post exploitation. And this is where I wanted to show y'all. Remember, I said, look at all those stuff you can do when it says help, all those commands. It's some real powerful stuff that you have in your fingers with these privileges, right? So it says, before we start our post exploitation, let's revisit the help menu. Help menu. One last time when I'm a Sherpa to show. All right. So let me go ahead and just scroll up so we don't have to type help again because it's pretty much the same stuff. Get rid of some of that fluff at the bottom. Okay, cool. So now we all set up, right? So it says, what commands allows us to dump all of the password hashes stored on the system? We won't crack the admin administrative password in this case, as it's pretty strong. This is intentional to avoid password spraying attempts. Password spraying is just another way for you to crack somebody's password if you didn't know, but you should know. So go ahead and research that. So let's go to hash dumps, not hash dumps, but let's go in. Oh, look, it's right here privilege password database commands so hash dump dump contents of the sam database that's how you dump all the hashes so you can get them all right wow more useful when interacting with a machine being used what command allows us to watch the remote user's desktop in real time so this is cool right so imagine dark that's our user we remote so you're at your office you're at your house you're in your hacker cave you got your hoodie on and you want to see exactly what they're doing in real time so as they log on to their bank account information or their website are they logging into the secret stash email and you want to see what's going on it's like you watching television you can see exactly what they're doing on their computer in real time which is amazing what if we sent them like a phishing email and you wanted to see if they actually clicked on it but either way let's go and look through these options to see what we can find 
Um, let's go up a little bit more. Let's see. Let me see now. All right. I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. Get prayers. Just gonna come in. We might have passed it already. Um, you know what? Which I think I did. Let me see. It should be like for the audio webcam. Webcam. All right. Oh, look right here. User interface commands. Watch the remote user's desktop in real time. Screen share. So that's what we need right here. Screen share. That's the answer. How about if we wanted to record from a microphone attached to the system? So this is fire, right? So not only can you look at somebody while they navigate in a desktop in real time, but you could record anything that's happening in the background, any kind of sound. So let's go ahead and see what, oh, this right here, record audio from the default microphone for X seconds. Record mic. So once you put record mics, easy day. Now, now we got, we seeing exactly what they're doing and we're listening to them while they're doing it. To complicate forensic efforts, we can modify timestamps of files on the system. What commands allows us to do this? Don't ever do this on a pen test unless you're explicitly allowed to do so. This is not beneficial to the defending team as they try to break down the events of the pen test after the fact. So we need to modify timestamps. Let's roll back. This is a, a security, not a security plus. I actually think it is on security plus. It's definitely on pen test plus. But that's a that's a question that you're going to see on your pen test plus. It's called time stomping. But let's see what the command is on here. It should be time stomp. But I want to show you. So if you follow along, don't just be copying my answers. Do your work. All right. Uh, oh, look, we went too far up. If y'all seen it, uh, this is not live. Y'all can't tell me if y'all saw it or not. <laughs> Let me keep scrolling down. But it's a time stop. Essentially, that's how you messed up the forensics or the time of the actions that you were taking. And they won't be able to actually um, identify when you did an action, you know, if they're going through the logs. All right, cool. So look, time stop right here, right? Manipulate file mace attributes. So now we good, we good. We found that answer. Let's go ahead. Look, we almost done, y'all. We almost done. And this is the cool one, like this, the Mimi Cats, where it talks about this golden ticket. So look, it says Mimi Cats allows us to create what's called a golden ticket. Like, so think about, um, think about Willy Wonka. He got the golden ticket, the little dude, right? And he was able to mob into the castle. He was able to go inside the chocolate factory and do whatever he wanted because he had that chocolate. He had the ticket, right? The golden ticket. So watch this. Allowing us to authenticate anywhere with ease. Whew. What command allows us to do this? This is going to tell you what a golden ticket is. Golden ticket attacks are a function within Mimi Catch, which abuses a component to Kerberos, the authenticating system in Windows domains. Majority of like enterprises use Windows. So guess what? If you can figure this out, you can figure out the keys to the castle, right? It says the ticket granting ticket. In short, golden ticket attacks allow us to maintain persistence and authenticate as any user in the domain. Oh, man, that's, that's, that's crazy. That's crazy. So let's go ahead and see what we need to do to get me one of these golden tickets. Get you one of them golden tickets too. We can all be like Willy Wonka and the little dude. Oh, look. Mimi cats, a Kiwi cook, Kiwi command. They got answers for us, brother. So look, golden ticket create. Create a golden Kerberos ticket. We don't even need Willy Wonka, man. We making them ourselves, bro. That's what we doing out here. And look, it says one last thing to note. As we have the password for dark, we can now authenticate to the machine and access it through or via remote desktop. Because remember at the beginning to ask this, what service is running uh, the remote desktop or MSRDP? And we said it was 3389. That was the port it's running on. So since we identified that that service was running on this computer or on this host, that means that we can connect remotely um, and see, like, you know, just log in, like how, how you would if you were to sit down and hop on somebody's computer. So look, and they give us the code right here at the bottom, right? Well, not the code, but um, the command to type in. So let's go ahead and copy this. It's not going to do anything for us right here, but... Let's just do it because it's all right. We already got it at the end of the box. We might as well 
knock him out the box, Rick. If y'all don't know that reference, that's slick, Rick. Oh, hold on, let me um go back, Command C. Moving too fast. I told you I'm excited over here. Are you ready to hack? That's what we're talking about, man, all day. So post, Windows, Manage, Enable, RDP. Boom. Oh, oh, oh. We all good, baby. We in here. It even tell you, look, if you want to clean it up, this is where you can find that file, my friend. All right, so look. We done with this. Now we on extra credit and extra credit. That means there's no more extra credit because we use Metasploit to go through this box and the crack it. And if I wasn't having to explain this to, to you, this would have took me five minutes. So, but that was with Metasploit, right? Because Metasploit already has a lot of the tools and the exploits that we use to compromise this network. But you might want to know how to do this manually because what if for some reason, you don't have Metasploit in your distribution. I don't know why you wouldn't. Or you just need to do it manually. Probably you're doing your OSCP or some other type of certification process. Or you might just want to test your skills and not have to use a tool um, to actually create or not create, but to hack into this box and achieve the same outcome. Uh, so they give you, you know, uh, a link where to exploit DB, where it'll, it'll walk you through that and um you know you'll be able to to do your thing anyway man look we didn't we did the box we did the box so all of y'all that got try hack me now you just got you another ribbon something else that you can post on linkedin or your social media you can go and brag to your friends and say look i'm a hacker now i did something now you got proof more importantly what i suggest and recommend that you do is create a write-up I just walked you through this whole box. All you got to do is write down all the steps that you took from point A or from task one all the way to pretty much task six and or from task two, because recon, we don't talk about connecting, but task two to task six, write it up. That way, if you, you know, applying for jobs, you can tell them, hey, look, this is how, this is a report. This is a walkthrough that I did on, you know, privilege escalation on a Windows machine. That sounds pretty cool, right? And you can walk through them and you can tell them all the steps that you took and, you know, look real saucy when you're in front of that bossy, right? Um, outside of that, man, what boxes are y'all hacking? Which I want me to do next. I'm doing all the easy boxes on here so that I can pique your interest if you are curious about hacking and how you do this stuff. Once again, I'm a huge advocate of Try Hack Me. Try Hack Me is great because as you see, it walks you through the steps and gives you hints. It gives you um suggestions and it's a lot easier for somebody to to hop on here without any knowledge and you know pretty much learn uh the basics all the way up to advanced because once again i'm telling you we only doing the easy stuff right now to get you interested but it'll be more advanced and things do build on to this um but you know my style man like subscribe if you on linkedin follow um tell a friend to tell a friend holla at your Yo, this is Antoine Matthews. I know I'm over here loose today with the language, but I'm in my element. So, hey, y'all have a great day. Um, once again, Antoine Matthews, this has been another awesome Try Hack Me tutorial. Have yourself an awesome day. Talk soon.